So we just answered a question about someone who's shared vulnerably and been judged by her family and her husband. Mm -hmm. um, there are times when sharing vulnerably, um, especially if you're going through a lot. Um, and if you didn't see that video, um, they were judged as being insecure mm -hmm. because they were sharing vulnerably. Yeah. And I've had times when, um, like, for instance, I just moved across the country, started a new job, looking for a house. Like, I have more stuff coming up, and I've been sharing more with my friends and, and people close to me. Um, and there's times when they don't have the resources to hold space. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can judge that and um, still share vulnerably with people you love and are close to, get the support you need, and respect their boundaries. Yeah. This is Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com. Kathy Bartuli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. Um, so, how, so the question is, how do you know when somebody has the resources? Right, because the general, like what you and I talk about a lot, and what mm -hmm. you've always encouraged people is, you want to share what you're, what's true for you. Yeah. But there can be times when you're sharing, like, you know, for the last month, I've had a lot of things that were unsettled for me, mm -hmm. and so there was more processing and more talking that I wanted to do, so that I could feel more grounded and, and you know, like. Oh my God! I you know I've never been in this job before. I think I'm doing a good job, but you know like this and this happened today, and I'm not you know, like you know yeah. wanting to process stuff or share stuff. And how do you know when someone has the, the space for you to be vulnerable and share? Sure. Well, I mean, ideally, you can just check in with them and be like, Hey, do you have do you have space? And they can accurately self-report mm -hmm. that they do or they don't. And sometimes they may think they do and they may not well yeah i mean a lot most of your friends will say yes because they care about you and they want to help mm -hmm. or they they are really a no but can't say no mm -hmm. um or they i mean there's lots of different reasons but like let's say that those are the main two and mm -hmm. maybe there's like a third where they say no because they don't want to upset you yeah okay like the, I, I i grew up in a family where a lot of people said yes because they didn't want to upset right and it was easier to say yes and just kind of go along with it. And kind of hope you can and hold hope your it breath get, And it. hope it gets over, right? Yeah. Rather than have to deal with cleaning up the explosion that would happen if they actually shared what was going on. Mm -hmm. So that kind of tolerating is really common mm -hmm. in most people's families. Yeah. And then they bring that into the rest of their lives. So, so understanding that all of us, me included, we have been raised in a culture where we were rewarded for tolerating and there's a whole martyr self-sacrifice yeah. thing where, you know, relationship paradigm wise, the way we show love is by going through more hell. Yeah. And like, yeah, it was kind of like if you're a really good person, if you suffer a lot for the people you love. If you really cared about this person, you would go out of your way. So add that all together, and it basically means, if you really want to go there, that you can't trust anybody when they say, when they answer your question, do you have bandwidth for processing right now? Well, even someone who's clear that may think that they have the bandwidth and they get part of it. All the great like, oh intentions yeah. pave the way to hell. <laughs> so based on that, and, and I'm being facetious, we should never share with anybody yeah. because it would be... Based on that, you hire a pro. There's a reason why therapy and counseling is really useful. Now, if you grew up in a family where everybody in your family is a horrible listener and gives you their opinion before you've even shared anything, then you're usually the one who's like, hell yeah, I'm going to hire a therapist. This is dreamy. Right. And It's wonderful to have friends that you can turn to and vent to and get yeah. support from. But... You know, look at, you know, what's going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, if you even have a, a, a whiff that they don't have the resources, then don't even ask because they're probably going to say yes because they want to support you. And you already know they don't have the resources. And if you have friends that do um, have the ability to say no and that you sense that there's you something. you trust their judgments. You can... And you know they're not under duress. You can request that they, if they notice something changing, they let you know. Because it's not fun to have someone be resentful or kind of take it out sideways if they're, when they don't realize they've just got overwhelmed partway through the conversation. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and then what ends up happening, like this, and there's a psychological term for this in, in business, and I can't remember what it is. Um, but it's the but then if we've been talking for thirty minutes and I realize I'm I'm at my wit's end, and you're my friend and you're in the middle of really sharing vulnerably, I'm probably gonna be like, we can probably go another five minutes. I think they might get over the hump of this in five minutes. I'm just gonna. Well, you've actually with me. With me, you've said, "Hey, I'm running out of steam. I haven't eaten or whatever. Yeah. I can give you five more minutes, and so that can let people wrap up, or you know, rather than like, hey, we're done,' and you're like, but I'm mid sentence.' Yeah, but and that's again, like I teach this stuff for a living. I've made all the mistakes and and more, so I can I can usually tell and speak up around that. Mm -hmm. But your friends, if they're not coaches and therapists may not know that yeah and you so can start just role modeling asking yeah. talking about it and I'm, I'm 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 only painting the picture for really the value here is when it goes horribly wrong and they just can't give you jack shit and it, and and then they explode and you and you implode like everything's okay it's just that they're not a therapist they're not a trained listener and they weren't able to tell you that they didn't have the bandwidth, you know, and it's okay. Like you guys will get through it, but you know, what are your resources? And do you have several people you can talk to just in case, you know, the first three aren't available? Yeah. And it, to me, it's a lot like a dance. There's going to be times when you step on each other's toes or stumble, especially if you're trying to do more intricate steps. Um, but having good, I love Reed's difficult conversation formula where you can clean things up and sit down and like, do you have a few minutes? I'd like to talk to you about something I haven't been saying. Um, you know, I really love how much you, you listen, how deeply you listened, how much you've been there for me. Um, I'm afraid that by talking about this, I'll, you know, ruin everything and you'll never be there for me again. But what I noticed is the last time I was venting, I asked if I could vent, but partway through you got a little snippy and you seemed resentful towards me the rest of the night. And I'd really love to know, like, was it was it what we were talking about? Are you maxed out? Mm -hmm. If you let me know, we can both take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. and so the difficult conversation formula is uh, you can go to readaboutsex.com slash difficult convo or just, just type in the search bar. Uh, difficult conversations and you'll find the article to it and it's there's great. also a free download yeah and there's like a model like steps mm -hmm. you can fill in it's really powerful and it's okay to be awkward at first it still works mm -hmm. good luck it's all baby steps it's not about perfection it's about progress keep going you're doing great and none of your friends are going to be perfect at this hell you, sh you should hang out with therapists who are therapists to therapists <laughs> And find out how fucked up the world is. <laughs> but getting your needs met, being able to communicate and share and get reassurance and, and feedback when you need it, that's way healthier and way more important than trying to be silent and tolerant. Yeah. So thanks for speaking up. Speak up right now. Leave some comments. <laughs>